If you guys are just joining in, take a look at part one to see how we got to where we are. We've got Subaru transmission parts laying everywhere, but ultimately we're gonna end up with this little unit here. And here's the steps we took to get there. A little RTV on the mating surfaces. After you clean them up, and we can drop this thing together now, finally. So the next challenge is to tie the pinion shaft to the output shaft through these two splines here. I think I'm going to use the old differential to get the female splines that I need and then weld things together in here. So I'm not sure exactly how yet, but I will figure it out. So now I've got a piece, a female part of outer splines. Let's get the inners. So my thoughts are, use the big cup to grab the output shaft splines, and then I use this small spline that I made to grab the pinion shaft splines, and then these come together. Um, I could go on a little more, but either way, I run a bead of weld around here, and this turns into one locked unit, and the power is permanently transferred only to the front differential. How'd that get hot? <clears throat> I also welded the center splines to the intermediate splines, we'll call it. The reason I did that is that doesn't have to be a strong weld. It just needs to retain this thing from sliding back and forth. That way the pinion shaft nut kind of squeezes the whole thing forward and it stays there. Because um, there's nothing behind it to hold it on. Oh, look at that, baby. Yeah. I drilled holes that I'm going to plug weld all the way around just to give it a little extra in case somehow this would ever fail, but I think I'm going to overkill here. Here you have it, folks. Spanky's little homemade Subaru lockup kit. Now you got your thick washer, thin washer, and your pinion nut. Now we're in gear. Output is now locked to the front pinion shaft. So this is now officially a front wheel drive or mid-engine Subaru Trans. So this is that center differential housing. You can tell most of it is just wasted space. There's nothing going on in here. So I'm thinking I can cut this all the way down to this pleat, just cut the whole thing off. It leaves me about here, right? It saves four inches, saves weight. However, the shifter shaft is supported all the way out here and that's where the seal is and there's a bearing here. Yeah, there's a bearing there and then there's a bearing further down. So I may do something a little different there. I may cut everything but the shifter support and leave that. We'll see, we'll see where I end up with that. But I do have two of these spare housings so I can kind of play around and figure something out. Bear with me folks and just remember it's gotta look worse before it can look better. I've cut the bulk of it off with the Sawzall. Now we're gonna mill everything flat. We'll clean up the shift support tube and then I will design a pleat to weld on here and that will be the new and improved back of this transmission. This was the vision. It's all milled off, nice and flat. Now I need to cut a figure eight shaped piece of aluminum here that's gonna get welded on and cover this whole thing. I gotta weld a little 
uh, half moon in here and I need to weld the hole closed on the shifter support. I did a little filing on this to make it look nicer. I mean, it could definitely use some more cleanup. So this is the vision I had in my head when I started this project. To make a very short, light Subaru Trans with no BS, no extra parts in it, nothing. This comes out to 22 and a quarter inches from the bell housing flange to the back of the nose cone, and then your shifter will extend you just a little bit more. It doesn't look much longer than a Volkswagen Trans. To me, it is five speed. It is cheap, available, and uh, preferably or hopefully a little bit stronger too. So. All right, guys, that's what I'm imagining as the shortened tail housing. Cut a piece on the lathe to, I think, 39 millimeters, press right in, whack it off there, trace out a plate on the front, weld this little hole closed on the shift, uh, shift shaft support, and here we are. That is my shortened tail housing for a Subaru transmission. It's about as compact as it can get. You've got very minimal space. I got this thing full of water right now because I was cooling it down, but you got very minimal space between this nut and this plate here, uh, just about you know two or three millimeters. So this trans is literally as short as you can make it without actually modifying the pinion shaft. Anyway, I think this thing sealed up nice. I'm actually very surprised at how nice uh, the Subaru aluminum casting welded. I'm really happy with that. I'm not a great aluminum welder, and this thing welded up like butter. So there we are. I'm going to dry this thing up clean it out, and we are done building this transmission. Okay, the trans is complete. Here she is outside in all of her glory, weighing 97.4 pounds, and that is without fluid. So we have to add seven pounds of gear lube to this. So if you remember my previous video where we weighed uh, the trans before disassembling and it was 134 pounds. So we can say we shaved about 30 pounds off of the Subaru transmission here. It now weighs within 20 pounds of what a standard uh, Volkswagen Type 1 bug trans weighs. That came in at 83 pounds with fluid. This looks like this will come in at about 103 pounds with fluid. So it is quite a bit heavier than a Volkswagen trans. I don't know what a bus trans weighs. I'd love to know. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. Uh, Size-wise, this thing's pretty comparable. Strength wise, we'll find out and availability wise, you can't beat it. There's hundreds of these just in every junkyard all across the United States. So very accessible. All right, let's go over some mathematicals of why this is an acceptable idea. It's a quick chart I threw together of the various gear ratios of the transmission options I have for this buggy. So what I came from was an early Beetle Trans, type one trans. Right, it's got a 3.8 first gear, 2.06, 126, and then an 8.9 overdrive, fourth gear. Most of the Volkswagen trannies have the same gear set in them. So that's like the early Beetle, the middle Beetle, you know, like uh, 73 and up, 73 to 79. Then you got the three rib bus trans, the five rib bus trans, the six rib bus trans. They all have that 3.8, 206, 126.82 for the most part. What does change is the final drive ratio. So on the early Beetles, you had the 4.375, not a bad final drive ratio. On the uh, six rib bus trans, it's even better. And then if you found a three rib, it's even better than that. It's like a 486 or a 538 or something like that. It's way up there. The reason you want those crazy final drive ratios is because we're running big tires on these buggies. So this is a 30 inch tire. 
that's it's it's large, but people go much bigger than that. And as you go with a bigger tire, you need a lower final drive ratio, or the thing's going to do 50 miles an hour in first gear. That's no good for getting through the rocky trails. So anyway, what we have here is um, the combined ratio is your gear ratio times your final drive ratio. So to me, a higher number here is better. So this is kind of how this transmission shakes out, right? First gear. 15.7 versus what I had is 16.6 and then I'm comparing this to the six rib because that's probably my best option if I were to stick with a Volkswagen base trans that have a 17.3 ratio so to put that into perspective what does it mean that means at 5,000 rpms I'd be doing 28 miles an hour in the Subaru trans and 25 miles an hour with the six rib trans three mile per hour difference nothing to cry about really all right let's compare second gear 9.4, 9, 9.4. So the Subaru Trans is actually better than the early Beetle, and it's equivalent to the six rib. Then this is where the Subaru starts to shine. So is when you get this third gear, you're now at 6.4, where the Beetle was 5.5, and the six rib 5.7, and then fourth is better, and then fifth is essentially equivalent to what these were in fourth. So you gain an extra gear. You'll probably be able to use first, second, third, and fourth gear. I never use uh the high gear and the buggy, but now we'll have more horsepower, so we'll see. But anyway, down here is, is what it would do in first, second, and third gear at the various um, speeds. So basically, you know, at 1,000 RPMs, the single crawl at five miles per hour with all of the transmissions listed. And then towards redline, it's pretty much the same thing. So while I wish this was like a five to one final drive ratio with this gear set, we did the best we could with OEM parts on a budget. So I think this is gonna work. It's clearly in the ballpark with these proven transmissions that people have been running in these buggies for years. And I think it's gonna work well for me. Well guys, thanks for watching this episode of me building this uh, custom Subaru transmission. I've been dreaming this up in my head for a little while. I'm glad I finally got a little bit of time to get it done. Uh, stay tuned for future videos. We're going to be pairing this to that GM LE2 Ecotech, the 1.4 turbo that I pulled a couple episodes back. And then we'll drop this whole assembly into my rail buggy mounted in a mid-engine configuration. So the butt of the train is going to be towards the rear of the buggy. The engine will be in front of it. And I think it's all going to fit where the Volkswagen air-cooled motor came out of. But we'll see. Stay tuned. i got a lot of videos coming up on that kind of stuff. I'm excited to get into it. Anyway. Got any questions or any concerns, comments, post them in the comments. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage.